Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Michael Schumacher all have claimed at least one Formula One World Championship at some point in their respective careers. Every one of them proud of their achievements, none of them satisfied with their accomplishments. They still want more. Their hunger for speed and adrenaline is an all-consuming passion. Raise your hand if the feeling you experienced after stepping off of a roller coaster left you wanting more. It certainly does for me. Maybe that small rush occurred when you overtook the mailman for the first time. Maybe all it took was sliding around the house in a new pair of smart wheels. Whatever the case may be, Formula One is just the culmination of those strong emotions on a bigger scale. A Formula One weekend can be easily explained by splitting into three days. I've been watching Formula One racing for the past decade of my life. Believe it or not, racing in F1 still remains my dream job. As this is an unrealistic goal, I have inadvertently memorized and collected stats about the sport instead. This morning I will walk you through what a normal Formula One weekend would entail by focusing on three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, respectively. The first day we'll focus on is Friday. It can be broken down into two one-hour sessions. Session one occurs just after lunchtime from one to two o'clock in the afternoon. The purpose of this session is to dial the car's aerodynamics to suit the track. It is important to get this session right because a team's weekend success hinges on the car's performance. Session 2 lasts from 4 in the afternoon until 5. This session is used to mimic a race run. Sometimes teams will have their tests and reserve drivers take part in the session. I've discussed what occurs during practice session 1 and practice session 2. Now we will move on to day two, Saturday. The second day we will discuss is Saturday. Normally there is one final practice session, also called FB3, and one qualifying session. Session three occurs from one to two o'clock in the afternoon. Teams use session three as a way to simulate the upcoming qualifying session. It is extremely important to avoid wrecking your car at this stage, otherwise you will be unable to take part in qualifying. Qualifying, arguably the most important session before the race, lasts from 4 till 5 o'clock p.m. According to Pierre Gasly, Alpha Tower driver, qualifying is the key, as we know it's complicated trying to overtake during the race, and other than by playing with the strategy. The session consists of three 15-minute stages. Stage 1 knocks out five cars. Stage 2 knocks out a further five cars and in stage three, the final 10 cars contend for pole position. Now that we know about practice session three and qualifying, let's move on to the final day in the race weekend. The final day in the race weekend is Sunday. It always begins at three in the afternoon, and this is the most consequential day because points are awarded to the top 10 drivers. The race can be split up into three parts, the beginning, the middle, and the end. The beginning, before the cars line up, the teams and drivers sit on the grid for around 20 minutes. They use this time as a pre-race check to go over the race strategy, roll the cars to the grid, and attach the race tires to the car. Once the engines are fired up, the drivers take one preliminary lap around the circuit, and after completing the lap, the drivers essentially park their cars in their respective starting boxes. The race officially starts when, according to Sky Sports, Announcer David Croft, it's five lights out and away we go. And the idling cars lurch forward from their standstill in their good box. Now we're till we're in the middle of the race. Once the cars have essentially stratified in terms of speed difference, they begin the race strategy. Some opt for aggressive strategies that require extra pit stops due to tire wear and tire life, while others try to complete the race in as few stops as possible by being gentle on their tires. There is no right way to complete a Grand Prix. However, there are a few rules. All cars must stop at least once in a race. This ensures some safety when it comes to tire life. On average, one set of tires only lasts 20 to 45 laps in a 70 lap race. Additionally, all cars must obey the race stewards. The race stewards ensure the drivers race according to the FAA's rulebook. They can also hand out penalties. 
This brings us to the end of the race. According to HuffingtonPost.co, all Formula 1 races are capped at 2 hours. This is due to fuel allowance. The race win is always given to the first driver who completes the pre-range number of laps first. The top 10 drivers receive points, while 11 through 20th receive none. First, second, and third are honored by a podium ceremony at the conclusion of the Grand Prix. Formalities are exchanged, trophies are presented, and champagne is iconically sprayed. In conclusion, I've walked you through what a normal Formula One weekend would entail by focusing on three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, respectively. I would like to end with a quote from one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time. His name is Michael Schumacher. He once said, just being a mediocre driver has never been my ambition. That's not my style. I'd like to challenge everyone here today to not just be a mediocre human, but to take my recommendation and go watch Formula One yourself. I think you'll like it. Thank you.